Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Zebu Nation plays the FM Scout Academy Challenge with FC Dallas in the MLS and here we are mid-season-ish you know I played a couple of extra games just to reach a certain point in the season and uh, I guess we'll look at the schedule that certain point in the season is the fourth round of the US Cup again I want to you know split the season up into two halves you know, first half, then U.S. Cup, then second half. It didn't quite fall as perfectly as last season where it was 17 games before, 17 games after. This time we played 19 games, um, but basically we're at the same point where we were last season, which is second place in the Western Conference. This time, though, instead of Seattle running away with the league like they did last season, they've dropped down to third place. Instead, we have our bitter rivals, Houston Dynamos, up here in first place. They're five points ahead of us, so that's a decent lead on us. That's a minimum, you know, two wins behind them. We have to get six points, and they have to get no points for us to overtake them. So after 19 games, that leaves us a little bit of a hill to climb to beat Houston uh, for the number one spot. But as long as we can hold on to that number two spot like we did last season, I think that'll be fine. You know, that'll get us into the next round of the playoffs automatically. And uh, yada, yada, yada. You should know that by now. Um, and speaking of Houston Dynamo, our next game in the U.S. Cup is against our rivals, Houston. So that makes this U.S. Cup an even extra special game. Not only uh, do we want to, do we put extra effort onto this or extra emphasis, I should say, on to the U.S. Cup because one of our goals is to win the Champions League, and the only way to get in the Champions League is to either win the U.S. Cup or the Supporter Shield or the MLS Cup. We're probably not going to win the Supporter Shield, although you never know. We're still, you know, uh, we're only five points back. Uh, Houston and Orlando are basically tied for the Supporter Shield right now, so it's it's still within reach, but it's it's probably not possible. I mean, it's possible. It's probably not going to happen anyway. Uh, the U.S. Cup is really our best bet to get into the uh, Champions League every season because not a lot of teams, or not every team, puts a bunch of effort, emphasis. I always want to use effort for emphasis. I don't know why. It's, uh, I don't know, problem. Anyway, if we put the extra emphasis on it every season, I think we've got a, a decent chance of making it. It's not like the Canadian, though. That's the one good thing about taking a Canadian team is you only have to beat basically, you know, three other MLS teams. And usually, a lot of times in the finals, you'll be going up against a second division or even third division Canadian team. So it's a, it's a slightly easier road there, but, you know, still it's a decent road here in the U.S. Cup. All right, so that's enough U.S. Cup talk. We'll take a look. We'll go down the checklist starting at the bottom here with the finances. And, of course, finances are still looking fine. We, we've leveled off a little bit, but we're still over $20 million in the bank. A profit, we're making about $200,000 a month. Not like record-breaking or anything, but it's it's positive, and that's fine. Income, uh, 805000 Expenditures, 582000 so it's it's pretty good. We're definitely keeping our expenditures under control. And that, uh, you know, helps the club out. And one of the ways it helps the club out is it lets us play pay for our training facilities. We've upgraded them again. It's twice in three years we've upgraded our training facilities. So that, that project is in the works. That was, I think, a $6 million project. So that'll be no problem to pay for at all. I made another board request to find another affiliate club, so we'll see if that works out. Who'd we go after this time? Uh, the Carolina Redhawks is who, who I went after. They're a second division team. They're not affiliated with anybody above them currently. They do have a lower division affiliation with the Tobacco Road of the MPSL. So maybe they like to stay local. I don't know, because I assume Tobacco Road, Carolina. That's a Carolina thing, if you don't know. So I'm sure that they're a local team to Carolina. But 
the only semi-local team to us that was in the second division was another Oklahoma City club, Royo OKC, and their training facilities aren't that good, whereas Carolina's, you know, they're adequate training facilities. Poor youth facilities, but that's okay. As long as, you know, our players go there and train at their regular training facilities, then they'll be getting adequate training at least. So it's not the worst, not the worst in the world. And that's all we can look for when we send teams out to loan on these small these small teams. All right, so that's that. Anything else going on here? Oh, yeah, job security. We're still very secure here at 66%. Board confidence still at an all-time, well, not an all-time high, but still very high for squad harmony. Club stature, again, on the rise. Very happy with the increase in club stature. What is our club stature, by the way? We can take a look at the club. Still three stars. That's pretty good. I think that might be just about as high as an MLS team can get in terms of world recognition. You'd have to win a lot. I won a lot with Toronto FC, and I don't remember my um, reputation getting much higher than three stars. Maybe you can get to three and a half stars if you win some big competitions. I don't know what winning a Champions League would do. I never won a Champions League with Toronto even though I got pretty close a couple of times. So maybe if we win the Champions League, we'll get a fourth star, which, you know, doubtful, but you never know. Maybe at least a half star. Anyway, not much else happening there. Transfers we can take a look at. Obviously not much movement going on. I sent some people out on loan. As I mentioned, I, uh, I found my other draft pick, Peter Begay. He was the wayward guy who didn't sign with us straight off, straight out of the draft. So I found him, signed him, sent him out on loan immediately. And after that, the only other move I made was bringing up Michael Quintanilla. I think that's how he pronounced it because he's a very American-looking dude. Uh, you know, if he was like, you know, Mexican or something like that, I might pronounce it Quintanilla, maybe. But he looks. Let's take a look at him. What's his information like? Does he have dual citizenship? No. He's USA all the way. Born in Plano, Texas. He is fluent in Spanish, so I guess there's a possibility. But I think it's probably Quintanilla. Anyway, he's a young young midfielder for us. And, you know, we've been thin in the midfield for the last couple of seasons. And this season is definitely no exception. So I brought him up, and he's already showing benefits. You can see all of his stats are on the rise. He's good strength, good fitness, um, decision-making, leadership. He's got some decent abilities, some techniques, some free kicking. So he'll help us out in a reserve role, if nothing else. Scouting, not much going on. Training, staff, no staff changes. Team reports, I haven't really looked at this this season. Obviously, our weaknesses, a lot of youth. What? There isn't much to speak of in terms of exciting youth prospects. What, are you crazy? We're all youth prospects. we got nothing but youth, youth prospects. Anyway, we got all these strengths and weaknesses. Our major weaknesses are overall depth, not a great deal of quality depth outside the first team, and youth prospects, which is weird. Then our second line of weaknesses, goalkeeper depth, we, even though we have like four goalkeepers. Midfield depth, uh, yeah, that's true. Um, attack depth, which I don't agree with that. we got a ton of strikers. And the midfield. Hmm, as a decent player's position, Joe Velasquez doesn't represent ideal positional strength for an attacking midfielder. Yeah, we are definitely weak at attacking midfielder. But again, those guys are young. Anyway, strengths, of course. Physical fitness, jumping, uh, depth in defense. Yes, that's good. Low payroll, through balls. We play well at home. Uh, we have a top goal scorer. Yada, 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 down, down the road. Defense and goalkeeping are our strengths. Tactic-wise, we still got the old 4-4-2 diamond. Although this season I've experimented a little bit with a couple of other of other formations, I've done a 4-3-3, well, 4-1-2-3, three, three, 
narrow, basically three strikers, two midfielders, and a defensive midfielder. And then, of course, I've I also had this. I needed a little emergency kind of defensive formation. So I went with a 4-1-3-2. I tried that, I think, for one game. Uh, 4-1-2-3. Yes, I tried it for one game. And we won 3-1, so that's good. But I haven't used it since. So anyway, one of the reasons for all of this, all of this problems with our formations and our depth and all that stuff, we'll go to our squad. And you can take a look, you can see it right here in our appearances. We've played 19 games, but no player has played in all 19 games. Hardly anyone has played in... Hardly anyone has played in more than 10 games. Like, we've only had 9 regular players play in more than 10 games. Not, you know, if you don't count these lone players. So we've had just a ton of injuries, just... You know, everybody has been injured, you know, except for Gonzalez and Acosta. Just about everyone else on the team has been injured at one point or another. And uh, luckily, everybody's coming back. Zimmerman's back. Hedges is back. Those are two of our big problems. Uloa is back. He missed 12 games. You know, he's normally a guy who's who's up here in terms of 17 or 18 starts, and he's only got seven. And one substitution. So he's played very sparingly, our best midfielder. And currently, like I said, we're mostly healthy, but we have one humongous injury, and that's pa Paxton Pomacal, our young midfielder who's been a stalwart for us for a couple of seasons. And he's out for seven to eight months. Damaged cruciate ligaments. So you know, multiple ligaments, maybe the anterior, the ACL, and the MCL have both been injured. I don't know. I, I'm not a doctor, but damaged ligaments, pure, plural, is, does not sound good. So he's he's out. He's going to be out for the whole season. And that's one of the reasons why we brought the youngster up from uh, our junior team. And in fact, we have a couple of other guys on the junior team I'm looking at that we might bring up. You know, uh, first and foremost, Mark Thompson, 17 years old. He's got decent physicals, decision-making, free kick um, technique. He's got some player traits, which is, you know, good for a young player. He doesn't dive into tackles, which is fine. Less penalties that way, hopefully. And he tries long passes, which is okay. He's got uh, decent passing, so we can, you know, if we get him up here and we train him up, maybe he'll he'll be a a better contributor. Because what I've noticed, I don't know if this is true or not, but what it seems to me is that when guys on this lower level, they only advance to two stars in terms of their ability. And in order for them to advance higher, you might have to bring them up into your team and maybe loan them out to a higher division team. So I might do that a little bit later in the season. We're not quite past the roster freeze in MLS. But you know, I want to get these guys when they turn 17 or 18, start calling them up and seeing if I can loan them out to other teams. I don't think you can call them up before that, before they reach 18, because not a lot of other teams want 17-year-olds on their club, just for, you know, whatever reason. Maybe that's programmed in the game. I don't know. But Mark Thompson is definitely a, ca a candidate right now. He's not even listed as a starting midfielder. Who's starting at midfield? Mm, they've, they're starting a striker at midfield, which doesn't seem right. Mm, they don't have a right midfielder, so I don't know. Maybe they're <laughs> they're in between matches right now or something. I don't know. But he does have 10 appearances out of 16 games, three goals, three assists. So he's you know pretty effective. Uh, 6.78 rating, not great, but nowhere near the worst on the team. So we're going to call him up at some point. Maybe not right now. But uh, goal-wise, we have an interesting situation here. Our young draft pick. Num I don't think he was a number one draft pick. I think he was our our second first-round draft pick. 
Anyway, he's a guy I didn't really want to draft, but he's got great stats, great physicals, 16 finishing, and he's currently leading our team with 11 goals. He, he's been a real bright spot while some of our other strikers were injured, including Akandele, who's second with seven goals. He's come back uh, with a little bit of a fury, not a full fury. He's only played nine games this season, seven goals, so that's pretty good. Uh, Washington, slow start again this season, only four goals, Kraft with three. So our strikers are scoring, maybe not quite as well as last season. But at this point last season, they weren't scoring too much either, and they really kicked it into overdrive second half of the season. So we'll go to assists. Cole, four assists. That's good to see our fullback up there. Washington with three. Velasquez with two. Again, not a ton of assists this season. Our strikers are doing a lot of their damage on their own. Players of the match, Alcantara, Cole, Acosta, Uloa. Yulo has only been in seven games, and he's got two players of the matches. That shows you how important he is to our team. Pass completion, Yuloa, 89%, but that's obviously a small sample size. Searle, youngster's got his pass completion ratio up there. That's good. Kraft, again, is a good passer at the uh, striker position, probably because he's more of a natural midfielder. And I am training him up a little bit to be an advanced midfielder, central midfielder. So maybe we can slide him in there as like a uh, shadow striker or something like that, attacking midfielder of some sort. Uh, let's see, tackles one, uh, Uloa, again, small sample size. Hollingshead, also small sample size. He's only, he's played in, started five games, played in ten. Escobedo, again, one of our leading tacklers. He was leading last season. Dribbles per game, whatever. Hindeman. I'm playing in one game, dribbles a lot apparently. Shot percentage, Searle's shot percentage is up there. Quintanilla, Quintanilla, <laughs> however we pronounce that. He's up there, Cole is up there. Our strikers are down this season in terms of shot percentage. Uh, Alcantara is only 61%, Kraft 61%, Washington 59%. Same with Akindele. So our strikers need to up their shot percentage a little bit. That's probably why they're not scoring as many goals. Yellow cards. Quite a bit of yellow cards. Especially Cole. Six yellow cards. He's a suspended for this match, as you can see, due to yellow cards. Uh, Quintanilla and Acosta with four each. They're definitely aggressive players. Red cards. Two red cards this season already. By this time last season, we had no red cards. Now Escobedo has already got a red card, and Hunter, another one of our draft picks this season in the Super Draft. He, uh, he's our third string advanced midfielder, and he had to play quite a bit this season. You know, he's already got, well, I guess he only had two starts. It just seemed like a million. Anyway, he had, in those two starts, one red card, so that's not good. Overall rating, our ratings seem to be up this season. Uh, Velasquez, for as much as they say he's not not a good advanced midfielder, he's got the highest rating on the team, 7.53. Uloa, again, small sample size, 7.50. Akindele, 7.27. And then we have a bunch of guys near the 7 mark, so that's good. Kraft, Alcantara, you know, all of our strikers are around there. And our defenders, Acosta, Zimmerman, you know, Hedges is way down this year. But again, he's only had 13 starts. He was injured quite a bit. All right, so that's our team. That's the state of things. Take a look at the competition again, just for fun. Supporter Shield, we're down in sixth place with 30 points. So it's a it's a good even league this year. There's nobody running away with it with it like last season with Seattle. Um, are there any surprises that I see on here? I guess Orlando City at the top is a bit of a surprise, but not much. There's one thing uh, MLS is famous for, maybe more than any other league that I know of, well, at least any other soccer league, is the ability to go from worst to first and vice versa. You know, just about any team can make a couple of good moves and they're in first place the next year or just play better. You know, get a couple of breaks, a couple of goals here and there. 
and you go from a team that's like worst in the league to a team that's winning the cup or you know getting deep into the playoffs like Colorado was a big example of that last season in the real MLS is you know they sign Howard into goal and suddenly they go from one of the worst teams in the league to one of the best at least one of the at least playing like one of the best teams in the league so those kind of stories happen all the time in the MLS worst to first dropping from top of the top of the standings to the middle of the pack or the bottom of the pack even so it's going to take it's going to take real effort for us to stay consistent up here at the top of the league even my Toronto team last season or last version of the game had trouble staying consistently at the top of the of the standings anyway talked quite a bit i don't know how long it's been maybe 15 20 minutes so let's get to the match already that's our season update mid-season update let's go here uh, we need to make a couple of changes first of all we're not using that formation we're using the 442 diamond coal is out suspended so we're going to do our little switcheroo here, move Acosta back to the right side, bring in our tackling machine, Escobedo. Where'd he go? There he is. Move Escobedo up. We finally have Hedges and Zimmerman back together at Central Defense. And again, this is a U.S. Cup game, but, but we're going to play our starters. We're going to play everybody we can. Because we've got a full 10 days until our next match. So there's no no issues there. So that's our defense. Acosta, Hedges, Zimmerman, Escobedo. Um, been, been debating between Kitchen and Van de Castile. They've both been playing fairly similarly. I don't know if I can check their ratings here. Let's see which one's which one's better here. There's Kitchen at a 698 rating. Where's Van de Castile? Yeah, he's all the way down there at 6 now eh, 88. I guess that's not much worse. 10 points point 10 worse if that's a thing. So we'll keep Kitchen in the lineup. Uloa is back finally, but he's lost a star all that time away due to injury. He's down to a 3-star player. Uh, Searle is our real only option there at deep line playmaker. Cannon, I think we'll go with Velasquez. We need to build up his fitness a little bit. Alcantara, he's been killing it, so we'll keep him there. And then, let's see, bring in Akindele. We'll let that combination roll, see what they can do. Akindele, do we want him at defensive forward? That's one problem with Akindele is I just don't know where to play this guy. In terms of striker, he's not the greatest advance forward in the world. We don't really need him at target man. He's not a great poacher. Sort of defensive forward is his best position. And I don't know, we're just, just going to let him play there and hope he makes plays. Because he does seem to make plays. So, you know, we'll do it that way. All right. Mm, instructions control this has really worked you know the 442 diamond control has just been working pretty well last couple of games not so much but with all the injuries going in and out it's hard to it's hard to keep that continuity required but anyway uh Yulo and velasquez are lacking match sharpness that's fine that's why we're playing them that that uh, catch 22 that, that this game offers where it says your players lack match fitness they may struggle you're like well the only way for them to get match fitness is to play the game so what am i supposed to do and i guess you're supposed to play them so that's so what i'm gonna do uh all right, this one isn't an easy game to call, but I predict FC Dallas to come out on top. Looks like we're playing away at Houston. The absence of Shannon Williams, Jamie O'Hare, McNelly, Torres will hit Houston hard. So maybe Houston isn't taking this quite as seriously as we are, even though it's a rivalry game, even though, you know, their coach even said, like, some 
non-rivalry stuff prior to the match. All right, so Zebu, it's Derby Day. How much do you look forward to taking on your local rivals? I personally look forward to this one. There's a real buzz. Blah, blah, blah. Absence of Stuart Cole is sure to be felt. How will he be without his talismanic services? We're fine. Uh, we look good in training and prepared for this eventuality. We got plenty of depth at the fullback position. It's one of our de deepest positions is fullback. All right, so here we are, the diamond. They're going with, of course, the 4-2-3-1 attacking wide uh, dealio here, the burning man formation, as I like to call it. All right, so we'll close down on their advanced players. There we go, and away we go. Should encourage encourage the team, despite us being the underdog here. Uh, I know we're the underdogs here, but um, let's see. Can we be assertive? Uh, the media have given you a lot of credit, so go out there and put on a display, I guess. That's fine. That worked. That, that, that one usually works the best. So here we are. Houston. I don't know what their stadium's called. Houston Stadium. Dynamic Stadium. I don't know. It's probably named after some company. I mean, not that we have any room to complain with uh, Toyota Stadium. All right, so we're controlling the ball like we should. There's Akindele to Velasquez. Making good plays. Controlling. Let's get it out wide. Alcantara gets it out wide to Acosta. He's double covered, but he gets the cross-ish. Lots of stuff going on here. Back and forth. Acosta calms it down. Restart the offense. Looks like Houston's starting to put some pressure on us. In terms of uh, coverage of the ball, there's... Ooh. Escobedo gets the ball stolen. I thought he was passing that, but that would have been a terrible pass. And then he misses the tackle. Down the right sideline goes Kudo. Oh, gosh. Wow. Wow, one counterattack is all it takes for them to get their first goal. This is not gonna look this is not gonna work out well for us. Don't even really need to see the replay. We just saw this. Here it is. Just I mean I guess you could blame that on Escobedo. He turned the ball over, missed the tackle. Not too good, not too good. Alright, let's try this again. One highlight, one goal for the other team, minute thirty one in. So not good. They're they're now putting some high pressure on us. So let's Velasquez calm it down. He's gonna be key in that advanced playmaker role. There we go. Candela get it out wide. Oh maybe uh let's see Escobedo. I don't think people want to pass it to Escobedo. He's just gonna turn the ball over. You go Velasquez, get it, get it, get it to him. Oof, Akindele, what was that? That was a uh, sky ball, man. But, you know, it was... Uh, if we can keep working the ball like that, we should get, we should get more chances. Got some chair problems at the moment. Got to get situated here. All right. So 12 minutes and counting. It's already down 1-0. Uh, you know, I've been uh, slacking on my videos a little bit. I, I've got to find some inspiration. Being seriously overrun in the midfield. All right, we're going to make a change here. I'll get back to that thought in a minute. Going to go standard. See if we can, you know, maybe push the ball. We go direct passing, see what that does for us. Escobedo with a yellow card already. I'm going to have to take him out at halftime, I think. He's just, he's just a red card waiting to happen. We should try to put more crosses considering we're superior in the air today. That's interesting. There's Escobedo with a nice tackle down to Akindele. Let's see if he can make a play. Where's Alcantara? 
Not. Ooh, there he is for the. Oh, come on, my man. You got to be more aggressive than that. He had the ball at his feet. He didn't even swing for it. Acosta with a yellow card. That's this is gonna cramp my style with both my fullbacks experiencing yellow cards here. Oof. Alcantara turns it over. This looks like a dangerous replay of their first goal. There it is. No, they miss. It was basically the same play though. I mean that that's a no good. 44 minutes, Escobedo gets it stolen again. Yeah, he's out at halftime. He's so out at halftime. This Torres character is beating our defense one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, Gonzalez, what a save. Wow, he sort of just punched that ball out of there. That would have been disastrous. Disastrous to go down 1-0 or 2-0. All right, passionate. Come on, boys. I know you can do much better with our tactics. So who do we got? We got uh, Hollingshead. That's really our only option here at fullback. But that's fine. He's he's good enough. He can play there. He can play left or right. He's more of a defensive fullback. But he's got great physicals. So he should be able to do the job. Get up and down the field at the very least. Anything else we want to do? Change instructions, maybe. Go to mixed passing. Go to crosses. You know, our assistant coach told us to to put in more crosses, so maybe we'll do that. I think um, get a little wider. Get a little wider, maybe, and pump the ball into the... We'll do all kinds of stuff, apparently. Start the second half. Who gets the ball first? They do. All right. That's fine. Uloa with a steal right off the bat. Let's see what we can do with this. See if we can... Uh, have they matched our width? It looks like they've matched our width. So that's not good. Ouch. What a steal there. But maybe being out wide will help us. Not in that situation. Kitchen comes back with the steal. Good man. Gotta gotta keep an eye on that dude. Kandele is gonna run through traffic with the ball, looking to make a play. Hmm. I mean, look at our shots. They're just off. They're just way off. Need to look at our finishing, our training in terms of shooting, and see what's up with that. Fifty-two minutes gone already. We've had, you know, decent chances, but not great chances. Getting shots on goal, but they're coming from far out. And that's fine. All right, here's another one, Velasquez. Let's see if you can get it. Here he goes out wide to Acosta, centering pass to nobody in particular. Here's Alcantara. Shoots it wide, man. Shoots it wide again. We're just not getting the ball on target. Let's, um, so pep talk, a lot of times when, when that starts happening, what I like to do is tell guys to concentrate. And that might, uh, Hollingshead gets the yellow card, so our fullbacks are just fouling everybody. Alright, so we got some, got some tired guys out there. Uloa is tired. So we're going to bring in the youngster, Quintanilla, Quintanilla. He's a deep-lying playmaker defender. So we'll do that. And then I think that lets us... Mm, yeah, it lets us make Searle an advanced playmaker. Maybe we can get him a little bit more involved in the offense there. Cannon's looking poor. So might not be a good idea to sub him in. Yeah, with Hollingshead being, you know, forced to play fullback, then we can't bring him in in the midfield, and we could have used him there. Uh, we, I guess we still could. 
if I want to bring in Johnson and put him at right back. He can play that a little bit, but we'll stick with this for now. All right, we'll see if the changes get made. There we go. Seventy-four minutes gone. We're starting to get into serious time here. All right, Velasquez with a free kick to no avail. He just boots it out of bounds. <sighs> Another free kick. Let's see. Come on, get it on target. Nope. At least he hit the wall. I guess that's an improvement. Zimmerman. Ooh, just kind of passes it to nobody. But that's. All right, we get the throw in. So that kind of worked, I guess. Quintanilla lofts it. We don't have Washington in the game. Oh, that was a nice shot. Hollingshead wins it, centers it. Nobody there. Well, the defense was there, put it that way. Okay. Mm Eighty-two minutes in. This will be our last chance to make a substitute that substitution that matters. Alcantara is looking uninterested, so we're going to bring in Kraft. Hopefully, he will be interested. Keep him in advance forward. I guess Akindele. Put him at target, man. Attack. Just see if that makes a difference in, in them getting him the ball. And the other change, I guess we'll bring in Van de Castile. Oops, nope, I guess we won't. That's our third sub. That's right, we had to do the Hollingshead thing. So there we go. Even though Alcantara wasn't particularly tired, he if he's not engaged you got to get out of there because we need a goal um speaking of that let's change our instructions to attack i guess we'll take this off i guess we'll risk getting stuck in and getting more expressive because you know another red card's not gonna kill us if we're if we can't get that goal there we go. Nice steal by Hollingshead without getting another yellow card. Didn't do much with it, though. It's going to be a long highlight, maybe. Maybe we can catch him on the counterattack with Searle. Nice play. Hmm. Not sure what's going on here. It's just going back and forth. Let's get that steal. Nope, missed the tackle. This is this could be dangerous. Nope, they just sort of dinked it out of bounds. All right, ten minutes left. Less than ten minutes left. We got to do something here. We got to make a play. Seeing if our going and attack has done anything other than no, it's just caused us to waste time. I don't think this is gonna work for us. I think we're gonna get knocked out. In the very first round here. 15 minutes to go. Can we get a miracle goal? Alaska Zimmerman up the sideline to Hollingshead. Gets it stolen by Kudo. That, that guy's been the man of the match for sure. He's got the assist. He's really sort of killed us. Torres. That's probably the final shot of the game with only a minute to go. Now it's less than a minute because apparently our goalkeeper took forever. Kraft gets his head on the ball, but nobody's there to follow up. Twenty seconds left. Hedges back to Gonzalez. See if he can waste all more time. Zimmerman fires it downfield. Not going to work. This is not going to be our game, ladies and gentlemen. Velasquez is going to get a card here. 
Nope, just going to get a foul. Good man, good man. But it allows them to sort of waste the rest of the clock, and there we go. Full time, that does it. 1-0 defeat to our hated rivals. Can't fault the boys, they gave us everything they had. Well, you know, unlucky tonight, I guess. That's fine. <sighs> That's fine. Analysis. Acosta, no completed crosses. That's never a good sign. Um, it says Escobedo won 100% of his tackles. That doesn't seem right. Hmm. Yeah, that doesn't seem right. <laughs> we saw him miss at least one tackle. Unless mistake mistook him for Acosta. But I don't think so. Kitchen, nine interceptions. That's pretty good. Everybody else, not so great. I can daily four fouls against. So yeah, not the best game in the world. And we're out of the U.S. Cup. So that means next year we're not going to be in the Champions League unless something crazy happens. Unless we can come back, win the Supporters' Shield, or win the MLS Cup. So I guess we got to focus on doing one of those two. I'm going to send my assistant here. But yeah, like I mentioned earlier in the video, I'm a, uh, a little bit lack of motivation for some of these videos. Some of my uh, video series have kind of ended a little bit. But I'm going to try to get back on the horse. I've still been doing one video a day. I've at least committed to that. So I'll do that at minimum. But I'm hoping to get back on track with my other series as well. So I guess I'll end it here. So maybe I can go record one of those other series. And I can upload this. But anyway, until then, uh, see you next time for... Let's look at our schedule. Boy, no more U.S. Cup. So hopefully we have a Champions League somewhere in here. If not, we'll... I mean, the next time will be the end of season review and hopefully the playoffs so until then see you later bye